Welcome back to Finals of the Academy. So, we're here in a classroom. This classroom is not actually marked for some reason. Um, what's this say? Caldarium. Whatever Caldarium is. Cold room, maybe. Kitchen, classroom, the book, portrait, bath, laundry. Storage. Smokehouse. That's cold storage. Well, Caldarium would be would be the opposite of cold. Hot would be the uh, sound. What's this? The poor man is this lowly. His debts are paid off with what is taken from his mouth. Fools are the rib cages of heroes. Beer is a bull. The mouth is its threshold. Your things changed things. A fox trod on the hoof of a wild bull. It didn't hurt it. Those who live near the water look into the heart of the mountains. Those who live in the mountains look to the sea. The fox, having urinated into the sea, said, The whole of the sea is my urine. You should hold a kid in your right arm and a bribe in your left arm. While you still have light, grind the flower. No one will give away even a barren cow for nothing. The sheep shearer sure is himself dressed in dirty rags. Alright, that's probably enough of that. Hello, a mirror. Hello, Garrett. You handsome devil, you. And another toilet, alright. And a towel. I'll leave the door open and it'll make it more feasible. Yeah, now this is the laboratory. Let's make it so we can see what we're doing in here. Lab safety. One, follow all directions written and verbal. Two, follow the spells in your spell box exactly as written. Three, do not experiment randomly. Magic is dangerous. Four, do not touch equipment, ingredients, or other materials until instructed to do so. Five, clean up. Clean your work area before leaving. Ingredients in the pot. Mother Mercy's Airy Spell. These four items placed together makes a power dressed with feather. Four elements to make the spell in Cauldron Black must come to dwell. 1. Not born, but from a mother drawn, I hang until one half is gone. In caves I sleep until I'm old, by then I'm ready, firm and gold. 2. The strong way throw, yet close I stay, I'm used just once then thrown away, dropped from a height I never break, but break I do in murky lake. 3. I'm without wings, yet I did fly, shot once too often I did die, with feathery tail and broken beak, your skill I used when at my peak. 4. I scurried swiftly without wings, yet caught in silvery silken strings I dangled, dead, eight legs be fed. Unless the spell with me is said. Now place your pot upon the floor. One at a time, all these you store. Your keeper's one powers in part to synthesize a vaporous dart. Okay, so we have a riddling spell. Which can't have noted down. Optional, complete any spell. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's not there. Oh, page 11 is the uh, history, which I didn't check the notes of. It's an interesting history. Information about Anhara, Olum, the Necropolis, and Ashes Endless Stairs. This book is too heavy to carry and too long to copy. I may have to come back and read it again. Oh, okay. I should maybe mark it on my map then. It was in here, right? In this room? History book. So, um, let's let's read this again. Not born, but from a mother drawn. I hang until one half is gone. In caves I sleep until I'm old. By then I'm ready, firm and gold. 
So to identify what the spell ingredients we need are, we need to solve these riddles. Hmm. Makes a vaporous dart. Oh, there's a second one. On the Mercy's mixed drink. Gather these to test your metal, each and every in the kettle. You must place them, let them settle. Next one bottle with a stopper, you must add within the copper. One, hickory, ash, alder, and oak. I never coughed despite the smoke. I did no crime, yet I was hung, inhaled my last without a lung. When quick I'm wet, when still I'm dry, I shed no tears from either eye. Two, I keep my heart inside my head, and on one leg I stand in bed. I can be white or green or red. When packed in barrels, sailors said, I closed the wounds that never bled, and packed their teeth back in their head. Three, thrust in the dark, you twist my tongue, heave from behind, then quick I'm sprung, soft my groaning quiet pleasure, midnight ward of lady treasure. Withdrawn your soft dangling tether, holds your part, tied up with leather. The wand is waved, the spell is cast, within the vile liquids fast, and hidden now are seen through glass. Drink down to help avoid a fight. This potion shields you from all sight and speeds you on as fast as light. That sounds useful. Visibility speed invisibility potion. Okay. Uh, is that actually showing on the map here as well? Did I right? Yes, I didn't. I just didn't go to the next page. We have nothing else yet. Alright, um, not born but from a mother drawn. Hang until one half is gone. I have no idea. The strong may throw, yet close I stay. I'm used just once, then thrown away. Drop from a height I never break, but break I do in murky lake. I think this is the toilet paper. <laughs> used just once, then thrown away. Doesn't break when it's dropped. It's from a height, I mean, it's a small height, but unless it's a, unless it's a long drop of a toilet. It stays close for sure, uh, even though you may throw it because it's paper, it doesn't go very far. Break it doing murky lake, yes, it gets sodden and breaks apart and disintegrates. Um, I'm without wings, yet I did fly. Shot once to open, I did die. With feathery tail and broken beak, your skill I used went at my peak. This is an arrow, is it? Shot once to open, I did die. Is it a... Hmm. Maybe an arrow of some kind? Or a broken arrow or something? Scurried swiftly without wings, caught in silvery silken strings. I dangle, dead. Spider food. Um, hmm, I mean, this, I don't know. Never cocked despite the smoke, did not climb me up's hung. When quick I'm wet, I mean still I'm dry, I shed no tears from either eye. So like this part was like never coughed despite the smoke, didn't occur to me I was hung, it's like a smoked meat, right? But then what about this when quick I'm wet, when still I'm dry, I shed no tears from either eye. I do not know. Keep my heart side my head. Ah. Uh, can be white or green or red. I mean, I don't understand the first two lines. This part sounds like it's, you know, some kind of citrus fruit to uh, prevent scurvy, but um, the first two lines don't make sense to me. Don't know.
Let's turn the light off in case anybody wanders into the room. Do these people have any, uh... What did I say? Are you searching the room? Maybe it was... Hmm... Right, do I just insta-fail? Thank you. What? Alright, I just need to knock everybody out, otherwise this is... Like, what the hell is that? How am I supposed to avoid that? Like, I was doing nothing, and they came in and turned the light on. Better not do that again. Alright, I'm gonna have to read this book. Scroll a note. Empty potion bottle will stop it. Okay, that would be useful. Creating potions. Don't know if they come in here. Hello. Roosevelt Bear. Oh, I can't drop him. Okay. Another blackboard eraser. Sees a classroom. Okay. Somebody's dropped something under the desk. Oh, wait. Do I... How many of these do I have? Three. Milena, from four. Introduce... Introductory Glypology. Keeper, Artemera, Instructor. Assignments, 3 or 12. Write own name, form number, class name, instructor name into a glyphology notebook. Books will be collected weekly, checked and graded. Neatness and spelling counts. 314. Copy down daily glyphs with contextual interpretations into glyphology notebook. Air, gas, youth, summer wind, oh, keeper, equilibrator, chronicler, outsider. Thief, burglar, cut purse. We saw that one up the, uh, in the intro video. Map directions, guidance, advice. Solve, understand, figure out, determine. Waymark. Take dotted path, go that way. Dangerous area, be careful here. Nothing, empty, maze, puzzle, problem. Choose wisely from options, make decision. Opening, to open, route, pathway. Hero event, wise person, oracle, wisdom. Fire, hot flames, leave quickly, go fast, winter, death. Friend. Supply cash. Crown, diadem, jewels, jewelry treasure. Child, baby infant. Key, unlock, resolve. Earth, ground, world, floor, solid, maturity, autumn. Rain, waterfall, waterway, water, birth, spring. Boat, sail, cross, water, sailor. Six. Shall we have the glyphs noted down too then? Ooh, hard to read them, but yes. Oh, necromancer, doctor, oh there's the six, the sailor, yeah. Necromancer, doctor, student, magician, undead, archer, sailor, and banker. Vision, dream, thought. Friends, supply cash, oh yeah, they're all, all up around the edge. Written on the chalkboard. She comes in here, I'm knocking her out. Saw something? Hmm. I seem to be safe. So, um, aha. Uh -huh. Aho. Uh -huh. Right, there's a much clearer version of those glyphs. Sailor, that's a little squiffy one. Yeah, I can barely tell it what it is there, but. People coming and going. Alright. Not safe. Not yet, anyway. Um, I'm gonna have to check everybody's rooms, I think.
You know what I should do? Leave all the ingredients. Yeah, I'll put them there. Wait, I was like, I see there's a door there. No water arrows in the bath. Can't turn it off either, somebody left it running. I think maybe it's the filling it. And it's very low water pressure. So I'll be just waiting a while. You will walk into me and threaten to turn the light on, Eliezer. Can't have that. Problem is I don't know if anybody else comes in here. So I should maybe try and take him to the janitors, back to the janitors. It's a long way to go without being seen, but... Everybody coming and going. Or my own room, I suppose, is probably pretty safe. Across the stairs there. Let's see if I can reach my room. Put a key on the belt. You didn't have a key, did you? No. Right, where am I going? What am I doing? I mean, uh, I think I think really my plan right now is just clean everybody up. Just make this place safe to search because it's just it's a fucking mess right now. Don't fall down quickly. All right, Lydia. Maybe maybe get you all to your own rooms later. Wait, you're going between two different student rooms? Suspicious. Right, Eliezer's room is marked, so... So I can't even tell where anyone is with all this... footsteps everywhere. Whose room is this? I don't know how to pronounce that, so... Really a Gallic game, but they're unconscious, so they're not coming in here. They've got a quill as well. Question. Who was character wise? Response. Carrick, Kellum, and Getty were travelling together when they came to a fork in the road. Kellum, a sorcerer of some renown, cast auguries and reported that the branch to the right was indicated. Getty, an equally acknowledged scholar, consulted his scrolls of knowledge and concluded that the path to the left was the correct one. Carrick could not make up his mind, and so pitched his camp by the crossroads, while Callum and Getty went off in their chosen directions. After a time, a traveller came along the right-hand path, from the right-hand path. Carrick welcomed him to his camp, offered him dates and wine, and then asked after Callum. The traveller reported that he had seen Callum battling a giant barrack. Callum's magics, however, were not enough. The barrack killed and ate him. A little while later, an itinerant tinker came down the left-hand path. 
After breaking his fast with the two men, he reported that he had seen Gethi beset by a sorcerer and transformed into a swan. The next morning, Karak got up, struck his camp, and headed back the way he had come. Soon he came to a small village, courted and married a rich man's daughter, settled down, and lived a long and happy life. Instruction, sometimes the best way forward is to go back. Question, what is the sapient stone of the Hierophants? Response, at the end of the third era, the Keeper Modrain discovered a red stone with which he was able to transform base elements to pure, illness to help, and ignorance to knowledge. With the aid of this stone, he became very wise and powerful. Over time, he became known as the Hierophant, or Explainer of Mysteries. When it was time for him to pass on, he selected one of his disciples to take custody of the red stone and become the next Hierophant. And so the Sapient Stone was passed down from Hierophant to Hierophant, until the day it was lost when Master Keeper and Hierophant Asher vanished. Instruction. Seek your balance in truth and dreams. Got some more notes then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kelm Getty went off in the Chosen Dragons. Blah, blah, blah. Kelm gets eaten. Getty, Getty gets transmogrified. Karak turns around and lives a happy life. So, life's tough and unpredictable. Garrett, you cynic. Question. Who was the Walled Keeper and how did he get his name? Response. Master Al was called the Walled Keeper due to the walls that he paid an itinerant mason to build around his keep. Master Alb had offended Olm the Necromancer, and, in fear for his life, he hired a stranger to build up the keep's outer boundary walls. The mason promised that the new walls could never be breached, not by hammer, nor wizardry. After some years with no action or further threats from Olm, Master Alb's fears abated, and so he decided to leave his keep to visit a friend. But when he reached the new walls, he could find no opening, nor find any other way out, nor could they be breached. Instruction, never let a stranger build up walls around you. Hmm. Hmm, oh, that's not so important. Alright, this is things Karak. Okay. Alright. Don't do the jumping when I want to do the mantling. Is that another quill? That's another quill. This seems clear. Right, is that marked as visited? It is. Okay, let's drop the other quill in here. Oh, garage quill. And a writing quill. That's two separate items. Boone's biggest barrack. I should read this. I didn't, I didn't before, because it's kind of tired of all the reading, but never mind, I'll read it this time. Old man Boone was sitting in his favourite watering hole, the Barracks Head Tavern, when a stranger chanced to sit down beside him. Boone introduced himself and inquired if the stranger was familiar with the habits of the wild Barrack. On hearing a reply in the negative, old man Boone proceeded with this tale. It was back in the early days of the city, back when the old quarter was the new quarter, that I was out in the countryside, taking a constitutional for my health, don't you know, that I chanced upon the largest bull Barrack I had ever seen. Having left my bow and arrows back at home, I snuck away before it could smell me, and went to get them. Now this barrack, he didn't wait for my return. No, he went on about his business and moved on. So when I returned to the spot where I had seen him before, he was long gone. Well, I took up the trail. By the time I caught up with him, it was late afternoon. There was that old barrack lying down on the sunny side of a hill, taking a snooze. Now I had thought that this bull barrack was big before, but as I snuck up on him, bow in hand, I realised he was even bigger still and that if I killed him where he lay, that I'd never be able to lug his carcass back home. So I hit upon a plan. Say, you wouldn't have a damn of coin enough for a small bottle of wine. Talking on like this, an old man can get a mite dry. The stranger quickly tossed a coin to the barkey. Taking a sip from his newly refilled glass, old man Boone thanked the stranger and resumed his tale. Well, the first thing I tried was to walk right up to that barrack, bold as brass, and attempt to engage him in conversation about the weather and the general state of the war with the pagans. But that old barrack wanted none of it. He opened up one eye, then he opened up his other eye. He took one good look at me, licked his lips with his old snaky tongue, winked at me with his off eye in a friendly way, and went right back to sleep. So I thought for a minute, then took out my trusty truncheon, and hollering at the top of my lungs, I hauled off and hit him right on the point of his snout with all my strength. Now, if you don't know bull barracks, you might not know that, as a general rule, they do not take kindly to being yelled at, and they definitely have a strong dislike of sharp raps to their noses. 
Well, that barrack was on his feet in no time, but unfortunately he decided to run off rather than chase me, and he ran off heading toward Pagan Town. Well, I needed him up by Shale Bridge, which was a much nicer area back then. So I ran around to make him reverse ends. I had my work cut out. Although the general direction averaged out about right, there was much zigzagging along the way as I steered him towards home. The result was that by the time I got that old barrack back near my house, he was so plum tuckered out he just fell over from exhaustion, and neither moral nor any other form of persuasion could get him to budge. So I killed him then, right where he lay, and skinned him. I used his immense hide to cover the bottom of my boat with enough left over for two mainsails and a spinnaker. It was just after that when I took a notion to go sailing out to Markham's Isle. And you wouldn't happen to have another coin on you for a small bottle to help loosen my memories of that rocky island? It's quite a tale. But they are a risk, aren't they? This is Eliezer's room. You know what? Eliezer? Oh, you're Lydia. Oh, Eliezer. Sleep in your own bed. Also, another grill, all right? I'll bring it back to my room. Question, what are Asher's stairs? And what is found at the top? Response, Asher, master keeper and founder of the Delphonic Order of the Keepers, built the endless stairs for use in keeper initiation rites. The stages in the Delphonic Rite of Passage are three. First, the initiate must pass through the maze of Anhara unharmed. Second, the initiate must climb Asher's endless stairs. Finally, the initiate must drink the potion of true dreams and have a mystic vision. Only then does one become a Delphanic novice, ready to delve into the deeper Keeper mysteries. Master Asher was last seen climbing the endless stairs. Some say he waits there for the unnamed acolyte. Instruction. One path for the wise, one path for the scholar, one path for the strong. Huh. I should be able to figure out all three paths. I see. Question, who is the unnamed acolyte and what is his doom? Response, we don't know who the unnamed acolyte is, was, or will be. He is most mentioned in the prophecies of Glyphara. According to some, her prophecies indicate the end of our current age will be heralded by the appearance of a shadowy figure known only as the acolyte. All interpretations agree that he will be a master thief. Some researchers believe he may be among us now. One reading of a relevant section in the prophecies is, the acolyte is doomed to live. But others think this section should be translated as, the acolyte dooms life, or perhaps, the acolyte ends an age. The glyphs are unclear. Instruction, the darker the glass, the sharper your eye must become. Huh. Yeah, I wonder who it might be. Uh, is Lydia's room here? Well, some of these people don't seem to have rooms. I guess there's a student who... Well, that's the bathroom. Right, they're not coming and going from... They're not coming and going from, uh... Their room. I mean, from... Between student rooms, they're coming and going from their own room, which is a little more reasonable. Tara Ra Boom DA. Hmm. Oh, I 
think there's nothing else to be done in this room. Okay, who have we got here, by the way? Sinead. Again, I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I don't know how to reach. How, how to read. Alec. Um, but we can bring them back to that room. What's the point of hiding now? I mean... I know you're there. I saw you. Maybe I'm not smart. That counts as a, as a detection or not? I honestly don't know. Guess I'll find out if I fail the mission. And I guess I didn't fail the mission, so it doesn't count. Did I read that one? Yes. Did I check your closet? I did not. All right. They're unconscious in their own rooms. <laughs> uh, Poldy's got a room here too. I will have to pick the lock off. Elena, you will wake up unexpectedly. I have no choice but to send you back to sleep. Deck cards, okay. Question, who was the black swan and what was his fate? Response, Prince Gitty of Anhara had offended the necromancer Olm, and so was cursed by Olm to wear a black swan's feathers every day and human skin every night. While a swan nor man, he had no memories of his prior life, only a nebulous longing for something lost. One evening, Sylvia the Huntress came across Prince Getty lying cold and naked at the edge of a lake. She was taken by his beauty and lay down beside him. At dawn, while she slept, he changed back into a swan and flew away. She searched long and hard for him that day, but without success. Just before evening, she spied a black swan flying low over the water. She quickly knocked an arrow and let it fly. Instruction. Look for the balance in chance meetings. Question. How is the day divided and what are the names of the hours? Response. Each day is divided into three eight-hour cycles. The first eight hours are referred to as the day's youth. The second eight hours are the day's maturity. And the final eight hours are the day's grave. The hours of each cycle are... Physician, student, magician, undead, archer, sailor, banker, and necromancer. So the second hour of the day may re be referred to as the student's youth. The sixteenth hour is the archer's maturity. The final hour of the day is known as the necromancer's grave. Instruction. If you don't know when you are needed, all the clocks in the city won't help you be on time. Question. What happened to Pavlov's cat? Response. Keeper Pavlov, walking home in the winter twilight, noticed a small grey thing shivering in the snow by her path. She took the thing home and fed and cared for it along with her old tabby cat. It prospered under her roof, but it was always hungry and she began to be afraid. One evening she came home and her cat was missing. The grey thing was there, though, grown big and strong and lean and hungry. It followed her from room to room as she searched. Pavlov died soon after. Some say in fear of the grey thing, some say of old age, though she was not that old. The grey thing died, grieving for her. Instruction. The hunger you adopt may consume you if you do not trust. Huh. Question. How did the Gruliac play his lyre? Response. The trickster placed Gruliac over the Kershok as their king in reward for faithful service. Over time, however, Gruliac became proud bragging he was mightier than the trickster. The leafy lord then came to Gruliac. In the fight, Gruliac lost both his arms. The trickster ended the battle when he opened the earth to swallow all wars the Kershaw. Prior to the battle, Gruliac was renowned for his fine lyre playing, but after losing both hands, he was no longer able to play. Gruliac then commanded his lyre maker to make him a lyre without strings, 
which could play in the quiet breath of their new land without sun. Instruction. A liar held in the winds of darkness may be the key to pass the gates of adversity. Hmm. Or it may just be a red herring. Alright, well you're in your room, so I'll mark that with an X. if you're coming or not. Oh, cool. Question, what are fire shadows and how did they come to be? Response. There is that fearsome monster which awaits around dark corners in the blackest hours. Only the fearless survive looking upon it. It is called Fire Shadow, for it burns darkeningly without being consumed. Immortal, it cannot be destroyed, only banished for a time by the stalwart. When the necromancer Olm cast his first death spell, a fire shadow, darker than fuliginous smoke, came into being. Olm saw that fire shadow, fought, captured, and bound it. He then sought out and bound all its kind to do his will. Instruction, where you vanquish what cannot be conquered, there is always a power to be found. Get some more notes, I'll see if we can read Garrett's commentary on them. So, that one's done. Seek your balance of truth and dreams, yes. Yes, when you vanquish by shadow, you bind by arrows, we know that, there's always a power to be found. Uh, if you don't know when you need it, all the clocks won't help you be on time. Pals up to keep his eye on the spells and the glyphs. Okay. It's not simply coming this way, out, is it? Also in that room. They had two things to pickpocket, which was nice. A key and well. Where's the keys? Yeah, so I can lock open lock and unlock the door. Does it work on this chest as well? No. Yeah, I don't think they come this way. The only other person coming and going is up that way. So I think I should be good to take Baldy here. Well, there's also there's the, the lady who goes in and out of the laboratory. She saw me. Stop hiding. I don't have time for this. I think that's mission fail. Maybe not. We'll see. Now, I filed that book myself. Not even he must have been nothing. God, she keeps going back and forth to the Bathroom all the time. Okay. Uh. Are we not here to learn? Yet, if I suggest some, I guess I just heard um rats. 
Wow, it's like wake up. The slightest rustle. I don't have to make a loud now. No, it's 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 just a tiny footstep. Old man Boone and the liar. One evening, old man Boone came into the Burg's Head Tavern just as a travelling man was finishing up telling some story about his travels to the four corners of the world. All the regulars greeted Boone and exclaimed over the travelling man's clever stories. Not to be outdone on his home turf, old man Boone cleared his throat and pretty soon a full glass appeared. He sipped. I remember the time it hailed so hard one summer that it killed all the chickens in New Quarter. Back before all those folk moved in and built up the city on that good farmland. Well over 500 chickens were killed on one farm alone. Everyone was worried about the terrible stinking diseases that would follow if those chickens were allowed to rot where they lay. So I got to thinking. Uh, you wouldn't happen to want to buy an old man a drink, would you? He asked the room. The glass was quickly passed. Boone sipped and resumed his story. I drove my team down to the wayside docks and bought every barrel they had stored down there for backing dried mackerels. With some rope I tied them barrels to my wagon, one stacked up on the other. They were stacked so high up that when the shadow fell across the road and onto a house, the folk inside thought it was night time and went to bed. Well, I hauled them barrels out to the farms and told the farmers that if they packed up the chickens with hailstones, the chickens would stay fresh well until winter. In practically no time at all, I had sold off all those barrels, and at a very good price too. Usually you could count on those farmers to haggle over every penny, but with the hailstones melting and me with the only barrels around, I got exactly what I asked for, for them, I can tell you. Those farmers had fresh chicken dinners all summer and fall long. Late into autumn, those chickens were so fresh that one farmer told me later that when he put his ear up to the barrels he could still hear his old bantam rooster bragging on his spurs and tail feathers to the hens. <coughs> Off the travelling man, who began again. Reminds me of the time that it hailed our home and one hailstone was so large that it hit the top of a barn, passed around the yard, knocked over a wagon, a small shed, and finally came to rest on top of a bark, killing it instantly. Old man Boone looked sternly at the man and then spoke up. Only, you see, I wasn't lying about them chickens. <sighs> yeah, scoff away, guy. That's a tall tale if there was one. Old Man Boon and the Hoop Snake. The young stranger chanced at the old Burg's Head Tavern and ordered a large bottle of the best, just as Old Man Boon was beginning a tale from his past life as a Burg teamster. I was hauling a load of iron ingots for the Hammerites from Dayport to what is now called the Seal Section, when I came across a Hoop Snake for the first time in my young life. I had a brace of Burgs hitched to the wagon and was going along at a leisurely pace when I chanced to see a cloud of dust keep kicking up over in a nearby field. The dust seemed to be on a course to intersect me and my team, so I began to pay special attention to it. As it got closer, I could make out what seemed to be the hoop from a wagon wheel rolling along towards me at a pretty good pace. I tried to detour around it so it would not spook my barracks, but as soon as I changed course, that old hoop did too, just as though it understood my intent. So I urged my team forward to try and outrun it. Despite my hauling over four ton of pig iron, I got them trotting along about as fast as I ever had a brace of barracks run, don't you know? But that old hoop not only kept up, but began to gain on us. Say, young fellow, you wouldn't care to share that bottle you have there with an old man, would you? Ah, oh, thank you. Now, the closer that hoop got, the odder it seemed, and by the time it was alongside of my wagon, I could see that it was really some kind of snake holding onto its tail between its front teeth. Well, when it got up towards the hind end of my lead barrack, I could see that this reptile was about to hunch back and strike out, so I asked the team for one more surge forward. Somehow that team found the strength. Oh, maybe we just hit a bump in the road. But the long and the short of it was that the snake missed and struck the wagon and tongue instead, burying its poisonous fangs in the shaft. What happened next was purely amazing. The wagon tongue swelled up so much that we had to saw it off and set it by the side of the road. A few days later I hauled that old tongue down to a lumber yard using the very same team. After milling, that old wagon tongue yielded up no less than 357 board feet of 16 by 2 inch lumber. Say, young fellow, you wouldn't mind topping up my glass again from your bottle, would you? Do you have any actual learnings here? Question. What are the lost strictures of Nanostratwell? Response. Master Keeper Nanostratwell's strictures to his disciples were written down as question response instruction teachings, such as this one. Each hierophant since Master Nanostratwell has added to and re edited those original teachings, bringing them up to date for their times. Over the passage of years, however, some of Master Nanostratwell's original teachings have become lost, misplaced, and forgotten, 
or simply as his past recognition. These are the lost structures of Nanistratrol. Instruction. Answers needed in the present to shape the future might best be looked for in the forgotten past. Also, keepers should have names that are pronounceable. Question. What are the 8, the 7, the 6, the 5, the 4, the 3, the 2, and the 1? Response. 8 are the rules of civilization. Filial piety, politeness, decorum, integrity, fidelity, fraternal duty, fraternal duty, loyalty, and sense of shame. Seven are the steps of the keepers. Patience, wisdom, knowledge, awareness, ignorance, foolishness, and action. The six are the six choices made with every step. Left, right, forward, backward, up, and down. The five are the five perceptions. Vision, hearing, touch, taste, and pain. There are four manifestations. The four seasons. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The four states of matter. Liquid, gas, solid, and essence. The four elements. Water, wind, earth, and flame. And the four portages of mankind. Birth, youth, maturity, and death. The three are reason, emotion, and tranquility. Chaos and order are the two prime forces. The one, above all, is balance. Instruction. The best of maps is no use when you don't know where you are. Any commentary for us there, Garrett? Best of maps is of no use when you don't know where you are. Yeah, and the best advice is of no use when it sounds like nonsense. Very good. Now this one has no commentary, okay. Right, this was... Shoram. So that's Poldy's room. Let's hope that girl at the end of the corridor doesn't come running running across again. Alright, Baldi. Rest there a minute. Question. What portends the end of our age? Response. Destiny and danger are still focused on the one, the renegade who is both brethren and betrayer. His true dream holds the balance. The lost stone of the Hierophant must be cleansed in death's cauldron. His eye will trick the trickster. His shadow will stop the rush that blows like a wind from the past to melt the gilded apple. Beware when glyphs scuttle from the one final scratching that will shatter the age. Pen and blood will no longer contain them. Instruction. Seek not the end of things, but beginnings. Mm hmm. Question, what is the maze of Anhara? Response, Egholt the Stark, the first necromancer king of Anhara, built a modest catacomb in a system of caves beneath the Anhara hills. Generations of Anharan kings expanded on these catacombs until the time of Ulm. Ulm was the last and greatest of the necromancer kings. He raised legions of dead workers from his slaughtered enemies and commanded them to build him a grand burial chamber at the heart of a labyrinthine necropolis. Some of these lost souls still scream through those corridors, searching for their defiled remains. Ironically, Olm was never buried there. He vanished one day while working on a spell for eternal life. A lesser king now rests in that chamber. Instruction. Prudence follows mute cries in unexpected flight, passing swiftly through the dark. Your objectives? Optional. Make a copy of a necropolis map. Okay. No commentary. Question. What are the moths of Anhara? Response. No one knows the origins of the moths. It is said that King Om of Anhara went into his necropolis one day and discovered a singular species of moth had taken up residence within, flying from one end of the dry and dustless chambers to the other in a seemingly endless circuit. Their body and outstretched wings had the aspect of a grinny skull, much like the emblem he had chosen for himself and his mages. These moths pleased him so much that he cast an Aegis Maior spell upon them, protecting them from harm and reflecting any harms intended back on the source. Aegis is a shield. Instruction, harm not the moths of Anhara, lest their pain become yours. Mm -hmm. so if we encounter any moths, don't try and attack them, yes. Ah, that one's just written as a Footnotes there, we don't have the whole 
Oh no, okay, the whole thing of me. At least you've annoyed me one once too often. You didn't hear my jumping there, did you? Oh, you're you're a lab lady. Am I gonna need the lab? No. You learn her. Congratulations, you're now the janitor. All right. Which rooms haven't I been in? So you're asleep in your room, you're asleep in your room, you're asleep in your room. I've been in all of them except the... All the student rooms, okay. We've got more tissue here. Wait, maybe I should drop in the... Uh, what have we got here? Oh, a whole lot more. Hello. Hmm. Wayne's Hill. You've heard of Swain's Hill over in Old Quarter. Old Man Boone was heard to remark to the fellow sitting beside him in the Old Barracks Head Tavern. Why, no, I haven't, came the reply. Well then, let me tell you, it's a small mound like hill where a barrack lived who used to worry the nearby residents. They had tried killing it, but that was no ordinary barrack. It was a terrible fire, so fast, in fact, that it could outrun the arrows they shot at it. Now, back then, I had a reputation as a great hunger hunter. So a delegation came to me and asked me to kill this barrack for them. I looked over the situation and saw that while the barrack was fast in short runs, it always used its speed to dodge around Swain's Hill, where it could stop and rest after the arrows had missed it. Knowing this, I decided on a strategy. <clears throat> Mighty dry talking. You wouldn't happen to have a coin on you for a small bottle of wine? Boone's table companion quickly tossed a coin to the young barmaid with instruction to open a small bottle. I rose early the next morning, Boone continued as he sipped his wine, and waited for the barrack by Swain's Hill. While waiting, I bent my barrack killing arrow around a nearby willow tree so that it was no longer straight but had a smooth curve in, the, curve in the shaft that went from due east to east northeast. Then when I saw old Mr. Barrack, I pulled back as far as I could, aimed, and let her fly. Sure enough, that barrack stayed true to form and took off like a pagan chased by hammerites. He was going full speed around that hill, but my arrow, on account of being bent, went right along after him. When that old barrack looked over his shoulder, expecting to see my arrow fly past, he was mighty surprised to see it coming round that hill, still after him. Around they went, that barrack chased by that arrow. After the first lap, the arrow was maybe a hundred lengths back, but the barrack was slowing. He had never run that hard for so long. By the end of the second lap, the arrow was only 75 lengths behind, and at the end of the third lap, the barrack was really beginning to slow down. On the fourth time around, that arrow got him, right between the eyes. Yep, it got old Miss Barrack. You don't say, was the amazed response. Boone's companion seemed to be trying to imagine how it would look for that barrack to race a best bent arrow around Swain's Hill. Yes, sir, that was one mighty fast barrack. Terrible fast. Say, you wouldn't happen to have coin enough for another bottle, would you? Remember, in the past, like that is awful thirsty work. Whoops. Do I look different in any mirror, other mirrors? Nope. Okay. Which room is this again? Did I read your things? Yes. Did I check your closet? No. Yes. That's right, I came in here. Oh, I came in here ages ago. Who is this in my room? Lydia. Where does Lydia belong? I don't know. She can stay there. Alright, we've got more quills. Eh, whatever. I'll just carry all the inventory. Why not? Okay. Caldonium to the west. 
Could be pretty safe to wander around here now. There might be somebody around by the kitchen. I didn't read this either. Caledarium weekly schedule. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, boys, mornings, girls, afternoons. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Male instructors, mornings, female instructors, afternoons. Sunday, all day, mixed usage. Wonder if that hurts. It's not that hot. And it's got a very, uh, extra rich wallpaper. It's a, the hot bath, right. It's a caldera. Who's leaving all these doors open? Let's leave mine open. Whether no one suspects that the students are all lying unconscious. Laundry. Oh, it's been leaking water and moss has been dripping out. We could turn it off. I don't know why I would want to. Oh, we've got stairs upwards. Where will they go? Guess we'll find out. Nowhere. I guess we'll go out to a drying area. Oh, all the suds have stopped. I just want to keep the, keep the washing machine. Oh, that's right. Washing machine has trouble starting. I'm not reading about that. Alright. Just got it going again. Oh, the water surface, the water's down too. Right, so I can make something soapy if I need to. There's definitely somewhere in the kitchen. But I've got nowhere else to go, right? I mean, I could go down the stairs or up the stairs. There's somebody on the stairs right now. Where did they go? Should have been standing in the dark watching, not, not in the light. They go down. Oh. Tension room. Wow. You're a bad student, you get chained up in a in there, that's not I'm not It's not too nice, is it? Can you see me? Apparently did. Better not quick save too quickly, otherwise I'll ruin. Uh... Ruin my chances.
So how do I get past there? I don't know. I thought I might have... No. And he's looking this way, so I guess I'll wait. But they're the ones that came down the stairs, I think. So if it's just about to be on the move again, maybe I can detain them. Well, I might have seen... Somebody else there as well, okay. They actually see me? No. They merely saw someone. They didn't identify me. Simon? Attention for you. And that's really bad. It's just a whole way that you can't even tell if you can enter the room or not. Without taking the risk. Not really even any darkness here. Wonder if I have time to stop for a snack. Light out helps. Maturity. Food. Okay, it's just general food. Eggs. Oh, okay. Oh, strawberries. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I keep my heart inside my head, and on one leg I stand in bed. I can be white or green or red. Strawberries can be white or green or red. They stand on one leg in bed. They have the, you know, sit on the single vine. They keep their heart inside their head. Their fruit is heart shaped. Yes. Strawberries. Cabbage. Oh, we got a uh, dumb waiter. Here follows how one makes the things mentioned. Firstly. 1. To desalt all manner of pottages which are too salty, without adding or removing anything, take a very white cloth, lay it on top of your pottage, and turn it over often. Withdraw the pot from the fire. 2. To remove the burnt taste of a scorched pottage, tie a bit of leaven in a small white cloth and throw it into the pot, but do not leave it for very long. 3. Large cuts of boiled meat, burrick, pork or mutton, are cooked in water and salt. The burrick is eaten with green garlic sauce in summer and white garlic sauce in winter. The pork and mutton are eaten, if fresh, with good green sauce made without wine, and, if salted, with mustard sauce. Mutton haricot. Take raw mutton, cut it into small pieces, and fry it lightly in lard with some finely chopped onions. Steep it in beef broth, add some wine, verjuice, mace, hyssop, and sage, and boil well together. 5. Larded boiled meat. Take your meat, understand that it is my meat or my venison, lard it, put it into cook in water or wine, and add only some mace, and some saffron if you wish. Fresh wild red deer and rodeo benson. Parboil it, lard it all over, add some mace and plenty of wine, cook it well and eat it with cameline sauce. Or put it in a pie, parboil and lard it and eat it with cameline sauce. Ball venison. Cook it in wine and water. Eat it, if fresh, with cameline sauce and sour pepper sauce. And if salted, with mustard sauce. Capons or veal with herbs. Cook them in water, pork fat, parsley, sage, hyssop, cosmary, wine, verjuice, saffron and ginger as you wish. Thick potages. Very contestant. Cook it in water, cut it into bits and fry them in lard and pork fat. Soak ginger, long pepper, saffron and brown bread in beef broth, because its own broth smells of dung. Or, if you wish, in cow's milk, and strain through cheesecloth. Throw it in egg yolks and boil. Take virtue scrapes cooked in water and add the bunches to your potage just before serving. 10. Criton of new peas. 
Cook them almost to mush, drain them, and fry them in lard. Boil cow's milk for an instant and soak your bread in the milk. Crush ginger and saffron, steep in the milk and boil. Take chickens, cook them in water, and pack in ice with hailstones. I mean, uh, quarter them, fry them, and add them to the milk to boil. Withdraw it to the back of the fire and thread in plenty of egg yolks. Well, I'm not going to read all of the recipes. This is this. Ah, too many. Far too many. Great dish. Fry your buried meat lightly in lard. Take some bread, soak in beef broth, strain through cheesecloth, and throw onto your meat. Grind ginger, steep in produce and wine, and put onto your meat. Then add gooseberries or some produce scrapes. Mm. Yeah, mm, indeed. Very useful if you're interested in cooking, not so useful if you are trying to. Someone should fix that tap. Uh, trying to pass your exams. Fire. It's another fire. Oven, we could cook some stuff. What to make grunden beans? Uh, drawn beans, gruel fast. It's an old buccanade. To take hens or cones or veal, other flesh, and hew them to gobbets. We shit and wash and hit well. Wash it and hit well. Grind almonds unblanched and draw them up with the broth cast there in raisins of currants. Sugar, powder, ginger herbs, stewed in grease, onions and salt. If it is to if it is to thine I'll eat it up with I don't know. Ah, this goes to the cellar. Hang on, those are oh there's a ladder. What's the storage room, right? There's a ladder here that I had not climbed yet. We could get some ginger. More food, okay. There's sacks of something. Hello. That's perhaps of interest. Anything of interest up this end? Just some spare chairs. Alright, let's pile all this stuff. Up here. See where that vent might take us. Fire care. I mean, everybody's unconscious in the room, so not too much of a problem. Anything on the other side? I hear some flies buzzing. Very strange to have a full size. This isn't just a vent, this is a. It's not a vent, I mean, there's no. The air can't flow through this way. Perish here. What is that by the head? It's a thing I think that I might want. Oh! What? War axe and a medallion. Hang on. Oh, no. well, I've got a skull if I need one, and a war axe, and a cuban medallion. It was. Well, I think I'll end the episode here. So, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you soon for the next mission. Brr. Next episode.